transport migrants and run the country. What do we expect to see and how soon? So we're, you know, one thing that uh, we've seen is our, our actions have been very effective. Uh, if you look at what we've done in the Florida Straits, we've surged resources to help the Coast Guard. Uh, there have been, I think, 11,000 uh, repatriations from interdicted vessels to Haiti and Cuba just since August. And the number of vessels really went down when they realized that it wasn't something uh, that you could do. So we've, uh, we've really made an impact on that part of the problem. And then, of course, our task force and the panhandle, you know, they brought a lot of uh, criminal cases against people for smuggling. Of course, the immigration bill is going to help us on that. But we also understand this is a larger problem. We've worked with sheriffs in other parts of the country. Uh, we may be having an announcement uh, soon about maybe a more coordinated effort to respond to what is a catastrophic failure of policy on behalf of the federal government. I mean, to have millions and millions of people flood into the country illegally, to have the cartels running our border, to have fentanyl pouring in in record numbers, you know, we're having all these fentanyl overdose deaths, which, and there's a lot of other issues with it. It's not just the supply, and we've worked hard in Florida against the demand and on the treatment with our core network, and we're proud of doing that. But this stuff just flooding in, it's affecting communities all across this country. So I think it's been absolutely outrageous what's happened. And I think anything we've been able to do uh, to push back on it, you know, we've done, because it's an issue that's important to every single community in this country. It's not just the South Texas border towns uh, that are being overrun by this. It's a, it's a larger thing for their Newsmax. Legislation you guys passed that prohibits Chinese nationals from owning land in Florida and gaining access to critical infrastructure here in the state? So basically, we've seen a movement amongst uh, the CCP and its affiliated entities to purchase farmland in the United States. And we think that that's wrong. We don't think, I mean, I view our, our food production as a national security issue. It's obviously very important for our economy here in Florida and in many other parts of, of the United States, uh, but it is a security issue. We also understand. There may be interest in them getting uh, stuff in military, near military bases. You know, the CCP actually has, in different parts of this country, their own police stations where they surveil basically Chinese nationals who are here going to school or whatnot. And this has been allowed to happen on, on U.S. soil. It's absolutely outrageous. So what we've said is no CCP uh, for farmland or near critical infrastructure like military bases or whatnot. So I think ours has been the most ambitious uh, of anywhere in the country, and I think it's likely to be something that is a model uh, for other states to follow going soon. Social and cultural reasons for the Do you think American voters want how many of these people were paid to come? I mean, like, honestly, it's like, so, seriously, some of this stuff is just totally manufactured. And I, when you talk to people, and I know, like, people in your industry will dress it up with a euphemism, and they'll say it's, it's health care to cut off the private parts of a 14 or 15-year-old. That is not health care. That is mutilation. And so when we're standing up against that... And so when we're standing up against that, we're protecting these kids. We had Chloe Cole. We've had other people who, who went through this when they were minors. Now they're older. And it's like the biggest regret of their life. They feel like that they were manipulated. I understand there's some physicians that are very ideological about it. But the fact is, people go through a lot when they're teenagers. You grow out of it most of the time in these situations. 80, 90 percent resolves by the time you get there, Sweden, these European countries that went down this road have done a big U-turn. They said this is not good uh, uh, medical practice, and so they don't do it anymore. So all we're doing is, is doing what's right. Um, the idea that this would have been something that people would have been, it would have even been controversial, even like 10 years ago, would not have been something that anybody would have said anything about. And I just think, you know, when you're, when you're talking about this stuff, uh, talk about what did the legislature do? The legislature prohibited doing things like double mastectomies. They prohibited doing things, you know, with, uh, with male private parts that are very graphic. They prohibited pumping these minors with puberty blockers, which is just not something that, 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 that it's appropriate. So I think those are appropriate guardrails. Look, there's some parents that 
this is something that, that they want to go down that road. But I think a lot of parents, you know, they just want what's best for their kid. Their kid may be going through something. So then they'll go to a physician and the physician is pushing this stuff uh, on the family. And, and that's just, that's wrong. And so we're happy that, that we were able to, to, to do that. And I understand some of those same activists were upset about the death penalty for raping the minors under 12. Why are you upset about that? Is that really the hill that you want to die on? I think some of these people that, particularly the serial abusers of these kids, uh, I think the only appropriate punishment is capital punishment in those situations. And so we were right to do that, and we'll continue to, continue to do what's right. So.